Imagine if you went from feeling fine every day to feeling amazing. How would your life be different? Everyone has the ability to feel amazing again and again. You just need the right tools to get there. If you're ready to feel amazing, stick around. Now, here's the host of the I'm Not Fine Show with functional nutrition coach, Lizzie Enns. Welcome back, everyone, to another phenomenal episode that we have coming up. I have a feeling that a lot of you guys are going to enjoy this one because today we are talking about hormonal harmony and how do we create that. Um, But before we get into that, I want to invite you into, uh, hey, happy new year. We are on to the year 2024. And I don't know about you guys, but uh, this is uh, January 5th. And it's it's the first week of uh, the year 2024. And this is such a tough week sometimes. I feel like that week between Christmas and New Year's is such an off week. And sometimes you don't know which end is supposed to be up and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. (laughs) And uh, I traveled like twice last month and it really put me out of a routine. So if you have a lot of things like that going on, that's what can happen. You're eating and drinking different things than what you typically do. Probably have a little bit more sugar and caffeine than what you normally do. Um, And then that first week after New Year's, um, sometimes this is a really difficult week to get yourself on your feet and back into the routine. But what I will tell you right now is that only about yesterday and today, I was feeling like sort of like my normal self again. I'm like, okay, got my routine in and I'm feeling good with with where things are headed, but it really took me some time. And one of the things that I did with that is in order to get myself into that place of feeling like I got structure again, is even when I was feeling tired and I didn't feel like doing the things that I needed to do in order to feel better, I did it anyway. So I made it to the gym like four times this week. I just got into that habit of going and I am uh, went back to my normal ways of eating, cutting out, you know, the typical holiday things. I never really like massively overdose on the holidays. It's just not really my thing, but it's still more than uh, than what I'm typically used to. And so it does start weighing down on you. And then I travel. And when you travel, you eat differently, you sleep differently. And so I've, I've just been like really, really tired And so I've been sleeping a lot, which is also what you need to do in order to let your body rest and heal and be able to get your energy back. So I've been doing that a lot too. But with that being said, I'm finally feeling like I'm, I'm back to, uh, feeling like my normal self again. And I know that a lot of you guys can resonate with that because this is such a common thing this time of the year. And if you live on the East coast or the Midwest, where it's cold and it's snowy, the sun's not shining. I talk to a lot of people right now that are dealing with seasonal depression. And that's very, very common too. When you're dealing and going through things like that, it can be really difficult to feel encouraged and inspired and have energy to even get out of bed or go to the gym and move your body. But it's even more important to do that. With that being said, I want to invite you into something. I am relaunching my next Stronger You group program, January 15th. And this is a group that I I, um, do all the things that I do in my one-on-one coaching that's very, very in-depth, looking at your lab work, doing your your, um, hormone testing, and we do full labs, review the labs, and then we work on nutrition, exercise, sleep, uh, daily habits, all of those things, but it's in a group setting instead of a one-on-one setting, but I do max it to 10 women. And if this is something that you are interested in and and you want to be able to, uh, be in a small group setting with other women, feel like you have that a little bit more support in that manner. And also it's a little bit more cost effective than my my in-depth one-on-one coaching program. This may be the right fit for you. And if this is the case, then I want to invite you to book a consultation with me. 
I can uh, uh, have a conversation with you, get your health history, figure out what else may be going on, what we need to do, and then get you started off on the right track to have the best and healthiest year uh, 2024. Because my word for this year is healing. And this is the year of healing. And I have a very, very strong feeling that 2024, the word healing is the word for a lot of people. This time of the year is when so many people get caught up in, hey, what diet do I need to jump on? Hey, how many workouts a week do I need to get in? And it's like gung-ho January. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, this isn't working and I can't do this myself. And the diet isn't working or it's not sustainable. Lots of fat diets work short term, but they're not sustainable long term. And they do end up hurting you more than helping you in the long run. And people are waking up to that. And if that is something that you want to do differently this year, then I want to invite you into this. Because remember, the the uh, epitome of insanity is doing the same thing every single day, day in and day out, month after month, year after year, expecting different results. And you can't do that. So if you find yourself on that that hamster wheel of trying and doing the same things every single day, and it leads into months and years, and yet you're still stuck on this hamster wheel of frustration and not getting the results and the answers that you need, then you need to do something different because that's the only way that you're going to get different results. So that's my invitation to you. You can also email me at lizzie at undietyourself.live. You can also message me on Instagram. You can also message me on TikTok because I'm there as well. And I do see your messages. So if you're inquiring about those types of things, please reach out to me and I have more information about it as well. Let's get into today's show and talk about hormones. This is such a hot topic right now because people are more and more and more getting um, familiar with the word hormone imbalances. And uh, I actually feel in a sense, like it's sort of becoming this like, I don't want to say fad, but it is becoming this thing of like, all of a sudden, everybody has hormone imbalances. Um, this is this is not untrue, but I want to make sure that we're careful, that we're not blaming everything on that. Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't have to blame everything on hormone imbalance. I am going to talk about hormone imbalance today and what some things are that we can do to create more harmony with our hormones. But let me tell me tell me a little bit more about hormone imbalance and what it even refers to. Hormone imbalance refers to disruptions in the normal production, secretion, or action of hormones in the body. Hormones are chemical messengers that play crucial roles in regulating various physiological processes, including metabolism, growth and development, mood, your immune function, and reproductive processes. When the levels of hormones are not within the normal range or their actions are disrupted, it can lead to a variety of health issues. That is your hormones in a nutshell. Now, when we talk about what can um, disrupt hormones and why they're off balance in the first place, it's not a, a straight and clear answer because there are so many things that can cause hormone imbalances. Now, here are some things to look out for. You know, if you have hypothyroidism, the chances are there's hormones that are that are uh, off balance because that's part of your hormone system, your endocrine system. Okay, if you have irregular periods, PCOS, um, autoimmune. Uh, like Hashimoto's that has to do with your immune system, but also can be connected to your hormones. Um, there's so many things like endometriosis. If you have infertility issues, if you have uh, constipation issues, like all of those things can be related to hormone imbalances because there's a disruption in the endocrine system. But what is causing the disruption? Like, why do we have hormone imbalances in the first place? It's the same thing and concept as I talk about when we talk about hypothyroidism. 
a lot of people get caught up in, hey, I have I, I have a thyroid issue, which you do if you have hypothyroidism. I have a thyroid issue. What is wrong with my thyroid? Let me try to fix the thyroid. But the thyroid issue isn't the root cause. Hypothyroidism, the thyroid is not the root cause of why you have hypothyroidism in the first place. There's a downstream ripple effect of what is actually going on. It could be your liver, your cholesterol, your vitamins and minerals, inflammation markers, uh, imbalances in your digestive system, your gut health. All of those things can be downstream issues. Now, let me take it a step further. There are some additional things that can be causing hypothyroidism or um, imbalances in your thyroid and imbalances in your hormones like progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, all of those. There's a lot of things that can be happening, but here are a few things that can actually be a, a root cause of why you have hormone imbalances in the first place. And some of those things are high parasite levels, high candida levels, high heavy metal levels, fluoride, mold. If you're really, really sensitive to EMFs, EMFs, uh, electromagnetic frequency, you know, from your Wi-Fi, your phones, <laughs> your, your, all the technology that we're surrounded with, those are disruptors. And so if you have imbalances going on, it's not enough to just look at your numbers and go, okay, you have hormone imbalances with your progesterone and your estrogen being off and only focusing on those things. It's not enough. We have to take it a step further and go, okay, but why is that happening in the first place? And I can't tell you how many times I've worked with people and I'll tell you this story about this client um, after we come back from the break, because I already have to go go to my first break here in, here in, a, in about three minutes. So we're not going to get into that now, but I can't tell you like how many people I see that um, have these underlying things going on with heavy metals, parasites, um, high candida levels. They have high viruses, like underlying viruses going on. And those are actually things that can be causing your period irregular irregularity. Um, I have seen women in their 30s going into early stages of perimenopause because of the imbalance in their hormones. So like if your progesterone and your estrogen levels drop too low, even in your, I, I've actually seen it in 20 women in their 20s as well, which is really, really sad. But it's very, very possible because perimenopause and menopause is a drop of your hormones, your progesterone, your estrogen, testosterone, those things drop. And if you are in a place, even in your 20s and 30s, and those levels drop too low, it can actually kick the body into perimenopause, which is not what you want because you're way too young to be going into that. Now, if you are dropping that low, like we've had, I've had clients that their, their levels were at that stage. And just by us working together, looking at what is it that their body is needing nutritionally, vitamins and minerals, get their inflammation down and going through some detox phases that they needed to go through, they were able to get their hormones back to where they needed to be and their periods actually started to regulate again. Like I've had, had women that were in their 40s and their periods were extremely irregular where it's like, okay, you could really actually be going into perimenopause and then into menopause, but you're too young to do that and they don't want to do that that early. And so we work very, very hard on the things that we, the underlying reasons of why that is happening, and it can take time, but eventually their periods actually started to come back and they started to have regular periods. And it's like the biggest celebration of the day when those things start to happen. 
So the reason I'm sharing that with you is because it's possible. Don't settle for the diagnosis and don't settle by saying, hey, I'm just going to go into perimenopause and menopause into my 30s and early 40s because it's actually possible to reverse it. You just need to know how and what steps to take in order to do that. And sometimes that takes additional, more in-depth testing than just the basic things to know what is it that your body is actually needing. All right, we got to go to our first break here. When we come back, I'm going to share something. Uh, I'm going to share two stories with you guys of clients of mine that um, is still to this day, like blow my mind. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'm Lizzie Enns, your host on the I'm Not Fine Show. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good. And that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about hormonal harmony. And listen, before we are done here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some other things environmentally and nutritionally that can really be endocrine, disruptor, endocrine disruptors that can lead into hormone imbalances. So please don't go anywhere. Before we get into that, I want to share a couple stories with you guys. Because this is really, really important. Because a lot of you need to feel like there's hope for you. And most people, when they come to me and start working with me, I don't do just the basic uh, workouts and and uh, tell you what to eat. That's not me. If that's the type of coach that you're looking for, I'm not your coach. We go much deeper than that. And so when you're the people that are looking to work with me, they're looking to get their laps done and they're looking to really, really go on a healing journey. And so... I just want you to be aware of that. I'm going to share a couple stories for from uh, two different clients of mine now. The first one, she had been working with me for quite some time. And it's just, it's tying into the irregular periods. Um, <clears throat> she came to me very, very frustrated, but also very, very sick irregular periods, lots of bloating, couldn't lose weight, any of those things. And just like, and she had like really, really swollen um, neck here with a thyroid and other inflammatory issues and had like a constant like phlegm in her throat for years. And she was not sleeping well, period. So we started working together and she's been with me for quite some time now. And that's one of the things that I want to make sure I emphasize here. When you go on a journey of healing and, and um, you need to like figure out what is going on internally and there's hormone imbalances going on, there's detoxing that needs to happen, there's dietary changes that need to happen, there's exercise changes that need to happen. 
I need you to hear me out when I say this and I need you to understand this. It's not going to happen like that. You cannot Amazon Prime your body and you cannot force your body to heal. What you need to do though is get, learn how to give your body what it needs to fuel and nourish it so it can heal. And you need to have patience and mercy with your body. Fif 12 to 15 years of, of lead up to, um, of illnesses and uh, poor dietary things going on, uh, fat diets, whatever the case may be, 12 to 15 years of that and plus like the unwanted weight gain that you got from that, you need to understand that that's not going to happen overnight, nor is it going to happen in one month, in two months, or in three months. So some markers that you want to really look for in that process, if weight loss is your goal, but it's not your primary goal, processes you need to look at and how you want to see progress is how are you sleeping? What is your energy like? Is your inflammation going down? Um, what, what, um, foods were you sensitive to that maybe you're not sensitive to anymore? Do you have less bloating? Are your clothes fitting better? And all of those things are much better markers than just relying on the scale. The same thing with like, do you have less anxiety? Do you have less depression? All of those things are affected with that. So keep that in mind. So this gal was with me for a while and you know, her, um, like weight loss results were kind of like up and down, but the other things that she was seeing was like, she, all of a sudden, you know, we're in three, four months and she goes, she calls me one day and she's like, Lizzie, I have not slept this well in 15 years. And so she's sleeping so good, which I'm going to tell you right now, that should be your number one priority is making sure you're getting quality sleep. Why? Because when you sleep and you get good REM sleep, your body will be able to heal. Sleep is your biggest digester or not digester, your biggest detoxer. This is when your body is able to detox, rest, digest, and heal. And so if you're not sleeping, you're not sleeping well, your body's not able to do that. And so she was able to get her sleep to a point where she's like, I have never slept like this in 15 years or since 15 years. So that happened. But a few of the other biggest things with her is that her periods were really, really irregular. We actually thought she was going to go into menopause. And, and all of a sudden they started to regulate, but here's what we did. We figured out that she had really, really high candida levels. Now we had already done some other detoxing, but we figured out that, that candida was one of the things. So what we had to do is she had to go actually on a candida plan. What that meant is she had to eat certain foods and avoid other foods that were actually still in the healthy category. But in order to not keep feeding the candida, she had to avoid those for a while. So she went on that, went on specific types of supplements to help kill off the candida and be able to um, diet down. And um, I kid you not, during that time, it was like this. Her inflammation went down. She got rid of the phlegm that she had in her throat for years and years and years. That went away. Um, she didn't have any swelling in her neck anymore. And she also started to lose weight after that. And on top of that, her periods actually started to come back consistently. So the reason I'm sharing that is because, yes, she's had hormone imbalances going on. However, the underlying issue wasn't the actual hormones. It was these other things that were going on that she needed to detox from, get rid of um, that were in her body. And now all of a sudden, her body was actually able to function better again and bring the hormones to the place that they needed to be. It's very, very important. But again, it's, it's a journey. It's not a quick fix. These are not things that just 
quickly like go away. I recently had a conversation with a client and she's been consistently losing weight over the course of us working together. But as with most things, we, we would like to see faster results, right? So it's frustrating if you're like, Hey, I have 50 pounds to lose. And all of a sudden, you know, you're 12 weeks in and you're like, I, you know, I'm not halfway to my goal yet. And I understand the frustration of that. But the thing that you have to understand is that you have to look at all the other things that you are healing from. And that is inflammation, bloat, mood, anxiety, your digestion, your period, like I've been talking about, all of those things, they really, really matter. So always keep that in mind that you cannot only rely on what the scale is telling you. And also, she was actually losing weight in a very, very sustainable, healthy manner. So you want to keep that in mind as well. This other client of mine, when she came to me, I knew just by like looking at her that she had some really, really um, intense internal things going on that that she's she was going to need to like heal her body from and i knew that she was going to have to go through some crazy detox to uh help her body and i wasn't wrong <laughs> but i didn't tell her that i just knew that by what i was seeing even from video like zoom to zoom i was able to see that um but we did the testing and we uh, found out what the things were that she needed to detox from, got her on a protocol, but we had to go very, very gentle and very slow. And I kid you not, like this person doesn't even look the same. The amount of, of detoxing that she's done to the point of where she's at now is immense. The transition was crazy and it was so fun for me to watch, even though it was was not that fun for her to go through <laughs> like but she knew she stuck it out and she knew by going through the phase of detoxing and then also supporting and giving her body what it needs during that phase she knew that on the other side of that because I told her I was like you need to you need to hang in there we adjust as we need to but you need to hang in there because on the other side of this you're going to be surprised how amazing you can feel and so that's what she did. And she's still working with me and she's still going through some of the things that, that she needs to like detox from, but she's at a much better place than she was before. I mean, she's wearing, she just told me the other day that she put on her winter coat that she's had since COVID, like, I think she got this in 2020, like COVID. So like four years ago. And she wasn't able to like close this winter coat for the last few winters. And she just told me the other day that she put the coat on and she was able to button it and feel felt amazing in it. And, you know, put some, you know, yoga pants on or something that she hadn't been able to wear in a long time and was able to wear those. So those are things that you want to think about when you think about your progress, like it's so much more than just that number on the scale, but we're specifically talking about what happens in a healing journey. And that healing journey is about what are these other measures of progress that you can focus on? Because when it comes to your hormones and you want your hormones to start, uh, be in homeostasis and function in the way that they need to function uh, and do what they need to do. Like you have to have so much patience, but you also have to be committed to it. And that is a big, big piece of it because, you know, I'll be honest, like sometimes I have clients that um, they know that there's a journey that this healing phase needs to happen, but it can be difficult when you're going through it in the middle of it and you're like, oh man, like this is going to take a lot longer than what I thought it would. And when you can dedicate yourself and your uh, commit to yourself and you keep, keep showing up over and over and over and saying yes to whatever it is that you need to do to help your body get to 
a place of feeling amazing and seeing the results that you want, then that's what you want to do. Like you want to be able to say yes to yourself and you have to say yes to yourself over and over and over and over again in order to get to that place, get to your goal. You know, people look at me sometimes and they're like, oh, wow, like she's got it together and she's, you know, I want to want to be able to do what she does and those things. And, and, and I have to remind you, like, I've been doing this for over 10 years. So it doesn't just happen like that. That is 10 years of consistency, showing up, doing the things, giving my body good food, moving my body, focusing on sleep, making sure my environment is healthy, those kinds of things. And that changes, like <clears throat> it will change over time. So you have to be able to swing with it and move with it because your life will change. All right, we're going to go to our next break here. But when we come back, I'm going to talk more about what some endocrine disruptors are that you need to be aware of that can then create hormone imbalances. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good. And that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to lizzie at undietyourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in here. I'm so grateful that you're here and hopefully you are getting lots and lots of information and also guidance on like what you need to be doing. If you are tuning in and listening, I want to remind you one last time here today that my next group program launches January 15th. And I mentioned this in the beginning. I'm going to mention it again. If this is something that you are at a place where you're like, I need help with all of the things that I've been talking about, I want to encourage you to go grab that calendar link that's in my show notes and go book a call with me. Let's have a conversation and get you started and make 2024 the year of healing for you as well. Also, I kindly want to ask you, whatever platform you are listening to, I kindly want to ask you to go and leave us a review. Let me know what you think about the show. Let me know how you're liking it and how it's helping you and share it with your friends and family because it's really, really important that this stuff gets out there. And if you know someone that this, this would re resonate with and it'd be helpful for them, just send it their way and bless their life with that. Let's get back into a uh, hormonal harmony show today. Let's talk a little bit about endocrine disruptors and what can even create hormone imbalances. There's so many things and I don't want to like overwhelm you and say, Hey, these are all the things you need to be scared of. Now I want, before I go into sharing some of these things, I want to preface something really, really intentionally here. I'm not going to be sharing these things in order for you to be scared because you don't want to be walking around outside in your home in paranoia of things affecting your hormones. There are things that will affect your hormones, but you don't want to be a hypochondria 
and and be afraid of everything because there's there that's happening because there's so much fear mongering and people saying watch for this watch for this watch for this i'm very careful with that i do teach my clients about it when they come in and sometimes i talk about it on my, on my platforms but i'm more careful about it because there's so much of that stuff already that you need to be careful. And also you have to have critical thinking with this because the question you have to ask yourself is, is this true for me? Just because it is true for someone else and, and let's say seed oils, for example, let's say seed oils are affecting someone else, causing inflammation, gut issues, brain fault, whatever the case may be. The question you have to ask you is, is it true for me? Now, I'm not one that goes seeking out seed oils, but seed oils last year took a hit. Like I saw people come out of the woodworks talking about seed oils. And I always ask this, this question, why is that? Why didn't we talk about this before? And why is this happening now? And I'm not a I'm not a promoter of seed oils, and I'm not a, a someone that's going to go out and bash them. And here's what I want you to think about here. Again, it goes back to is it true for me? When you look at where the dominant amount of seed oils are used, is actually in highly processed foods. So is it the seed oils, or is it the highly processed foods? Now, the next question is, are you using a lot of seed oils to cook things at home where they're they're heated on high? So if, if seed oils have a low burning point and you're using them in a high heat scenario where you're frying things with it, it, it uh, is taking it to the point of oxidation where then all of a sudden it becomes sort of like a, a poison for you. Um, Maybe that's what the problem is. Now, I have seen people talk about this before with their experience with seed oils, and they've said they actually cut out seed oils and their inflammation went down drastically, which means this, seed oils are bad for them. But what I want to tell you is the best thing that you can do is experiment with it. And you go, okay, I'm seeing this and I'm hearing this. I don't feel well. I have inflammation all the time. Is there something to this? You test it and you go, hmm. If, if you pay attention and you say, I'm consuming a lot of seed oils and this is how I feel, they said they feel better. You could say, hey, I'm going to cut seed oil oils out for a bit and I'm going to see if I see a change. And if you see a change, then you have your answer and you go, seed oils aren't good for me. But that doesn't mean that it is like that for every single person on the planet, because guess what? Everybody has different, like you can have different DNA makeup and different genetic makeup. Uh, that's the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> I was, I was going to talk about enzyme, enzyme production. So some people have certain type of enzymes that other people don't have. And therefore your body's not able to digest and absorb certain foods in the proper manner. The same thing with vitamins and minerals. And so those are the reasons why it's a bio-individual approach. And this is what I mean by critical thinking. You have to have critical thinking for yourself and not believe that everything that you hear and read and see online is true for you. So make sure that you're not going into um, a season of hypochondria and being afraid of everything. I've been there before. Now let's move on from that. Let's talk about some other things that can uh, create these hormone imbalances and in inflammatory issues in the body. I've talked about it before. You know, your parasites, your heavy metals, your high, high candida levels, those, those can be underlying root issues. Vitamin and mineral deficiencies can be underlying issues of creating these imbalances and inflammatory issues because your body isn't needing. So if you, if you're someone that struggles and deals with like massive brain fog and you're just like losing your train of thought, 
there's uh, several reasons why this can be happening. Brain fog is actually highly connected to hormone imbalances and hypothyroidism. But let's take it a step further. If your body has the vitamins and minerals that it needs in order to support the brain function, what happens then? It's almost like a two, two for one kind of deal. You're supporting your brain fault by giving it the vitamins and minerals that it needs, but it's also helping your other issues over here, which can be your hormones. So let's take fish oil, for example. Fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids, incredibly powerful for the brain. Very, very supportive of the brain. It's also very, very supportive of your gut health. It's also very, very supportive in fighting inflammation for your immune system as well. So when you're taking it in terms of that, you're actually getting so many benefits in a well-rounded manner. I'm a huge fan of fish oil, but also the most natural form of vitamin D is in a really good fish oil. So if you are not someone that is critically low in vitamin D, a great way to try to get your vitamin D levels up is a really high quality fish oil and see if you can get away without taking a synthetic vitamin D. Did you guys know that a typical vitamin D supplement is actually a synthetic form of vitamin D? And some people are not able to digest and absorb it very well. It, again, this goes back to enzymes and genetics. And other people, they go on, if they're critically low in vitamin D, they can go on by high doses of, of synthetic vitamin D and see a difference in how they feel just like that. It really, really depends. But I'll tell you, like, there's actually, actually in vitamin D, there are some people that can be out in the sun all day and they don't absorb the vitamin D in through their skin. And so they can be low in vitamin D and it's literally because their body's not absorbing the vitamin D through the um, skin. That, that can be a genetic thing. So with that being said, vitamins and minerals. Now let's take it a step further and look at uh, your diet. So when we look at your diet, how balanced is it? Are you getting the protein that you need? Are you getting the healthy fats that you need? Are you having the complex carbohydrates that you need? Each one has its individual purpose. Hormonally, energy, uh, structurally, gut health, your organs, all of those. Your brain, if you don't know this, your brain has up to is 60% fatty tissue, 60%. So if you eat a low fat diet, the chances are very high that you'll have brain fog because you need to eat healthy fat in order to support the brain, which is why the omega-3 fatty acids are so good for the brain. <laughs> See what I did there? Dot, dot, dot. It's a ripple effect. Do you have to keep that in mind? So what does your diet look like? Is it balanced? I'm going to go take it all the way back to what I've been talking about for a very long time, and I'm going to keep hammering this in you. The foundation of your health are these four things. Your diet, your nutrition. What is it? What is how balances that and what does that look like? Are you getting your fats, carbs, and proteins and your fiber? Your exercise, how much are you moving your body? Because exercise, specifically weight training exercise, helps boost your testosterone. So if you have a low testosterone and you're not doing any kind of exercise, you probably need to start exercising. It will naturally help boost your testosterone. Water. Are you getting enough water and are you hydrating? Really, really important, even for your hormones. Doesn't matter where you are, are at in life. These foundation, foundational things are extremely important. And then your sleep. How are you sleeping? Remember how I talked about sleep? Is this where your body like rests, digests, it detox and it heals? Sleep. So all of these four things are still true. Even when you have hormone imbalances, when you have gut issues, when you have thyroid issues, when you have autoimmune issues, just know that the plate of your food may look different for someone that has hypothyroidism than someone that has SIBO, but it's still important. You just need to know and figure out like what that is for you. And that is not a straight, simple answer. 
but that is the foundation of your health. If you can focus on those things and figure out like what that needs to look like for you, you are far ahead of the game. When we come back, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some other things externally that can be endocrine disruptors that you need to be aware of, because unfortunately we have to go to our next break and our last break. And I feel like I have a whole nother hour of things to talk about, but I can't do that today. So I'm going to give you as much as I can. So don't go anywhere. I'm Lizzie Anson. Yeah, I'm not fine. Joe, we'll be right back. We often get used to just feeling fine instead of reaching to feel excellent or even good. Wellness is about feeling good. And that is a journey of continually coming back to what is nourishing and healing for us. Your body is functional and ever-changing, like a pendulum swinging. We must learn how to move with our bodies. Tuning into I'm Not Fine with functional nutrition coach Lizzie Enns will provide you with simple but effective tools that you can use right away so you can go from feeling just fine to feeling amazing. Listen for I'm Not Fine on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, and 12 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is I'm Not Fine with Lizzie Enns. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Lizzie at UndietYourself.live. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. Before I finish out this show, I have to share. Next week, I'm going to have one of my amazing friends and peers on the show with me. And I am obsessed with this girl and what she does. Um, Melita is going to be on with me next week. And the title of the show next week is going to be Nutrition and Libido, a biochemical biochemical dance. There is a dance between nutrition and libido. If you are someone that has a low libido and you're like, I don't know what's going on with me. There's something wrong, my hormones, all of those things. We're going to be diving deep on that topic next week. And Melita has over 20 years of experience in the health and wellness field. And um, she's also a sex and intimacy coach, which is probably my favorite part about her because um, I could just talk to her for hours on on all of the things that we're going to be talking about next week. So we're not even going to have enough time in an hour, but we're going to make the best of it. So you're going to want to come back next week for that show because it's going to be absolutely amazing and we're going to have a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to uh, close out this show today with a few more um, tips and information on things to look out for. So here's some things that I want you to look out for as far as what are hormone disruptors, endocrine disruptors? What are things that we need to look out for? I've already talked about some of the things. Now, when we look at our food, as far as hormone disruptors go, you want to just think like, What foods don't come in their plainest form, in their simplest form? So if you're eating ultra-processed foods, fast foods, fried foods, high sugar, all of those things, those are endocrine disruptors if you do it in a surplus amount. Alcohol, if you overconsume alcohol, you eventually are going to probably go into estrogen dominance. And estrogen is one of those things that lives in your fat cells. So if you have a lot of times when women come to me and they say, okay, I've been uh, gaining like excess weight. I know my hormones are off. The one question I ask them is where are you gaining your weight? And a lot of times um, they'll say, hey, I'm, I'm gaining it on my hips and my butt and my lower belly, the back of my arms. And that is a true sign of estrogen dominance because estrogen, the women, the the reason women have uh, more curves in, in a higher percentage of body fat is because we typically have more estrogen. We have to have more estrogen. Now I I've been in a place in my life before where I was incredibly lean. I was like 14% or lower body fat. And that's actually not healthy for a woman, but I I actually wasn't trying to be that low. It just, I was breastfeeding and my body just like gave everything to that area and it just dropped me so low, but I, and I, I looked good, but I was 
dying on the inside. I was so tired all the time and everything was just like low. So I had really, really low estrogen levels, but also I had really low testosterone levels. And so with that being said, when I got done breastfeeding, I intentionally like upped my body fat because I realized at that point in time that that wasn't, wasn't serving me and it wasn't like the way that I wanted to feel. So with that being said, alcohol is one of those things that can drop testosterone and it can cause estrogen dominance if you overdo it. So you just want to be careful with that. Environmental things, like if you're using highly toxic things on your skin, those are endocrine disruptors. So whatever soaps and lotions that you're using, whatever perfumes that you're using, whatever skincare that you're using, hair products that you're using, um, even, so now let's take it to the kitchen. So that's that's like bathroom stuff, skin stuff. The average woman applies over 200 chemicals on her body every single day. And that is, I believe, one of the reasons why so many women are having thyroid and hormone issues. I think it's just one of the pieces of the puzzle. Take it to the kitchen and you talk, if you are using non-stick types of pans, if you're using a lot of plastics, there's estrogen in uh, and phthalates and stuff like that in BPAs in plastics. There's chemicals in nonstick pans. And then if you scratch the pan and you're still cooking food in it, there's toxins and chemicals in that and it's seeping into your food. Those are endocrine disruptors. And then we talk about cleaning products. Are you using highly toxic cleaning products? Are you using high laundry detergent that is highly, highly toxic? Now you're sleeping on that with your bed sheets. You're wearing it every single day. Those can be endocrine disruptors. Are you using air freshener plug-ins and constantly inhaling that? Are you using highly toxic candles? Endocrine disruptors. Things you want to be aware of. Again, I'm going to emphasize this again. It's not that you should be scared of it, it's that you should feel in control of it. So if you are someone that's like, oh, wow, like I really got to like detox my house and like redo everything, take your time. Start researching on what some things are that you can um, change into and just pick like one or two things at a time and saying, okay, I'm going to start swapping these things out. But these are things that you need to be aware of. It's not about, again, I'm going to say it again. It's not about being scared. It's about being aware and then making the changes and the shifts as you can. So again, I'm going to reiterate some of these things. When you think of your hormones and your thyroid and what are things that are going to um, kind of disrupt them, it's all the things that we talked about, okay? And then how do you create that hormonal harmony? Also, I just want to... Uh, pinpoint this, put this pin in here for just saying, I don't have time to go into it, but your stress, if you're not regulating your stress, that is a huge factor of, um, contributing to hormone imbalances and, and thyroid issues as well. So you want to make sure that you, you manage your stress really well too. Stress isn't a bad thing. You just got to know how to manage it really well and take care of yourself there. So think about what your diet looks like. How do you need to adjust that? and get some exercise in if you're not doing any kind of exercise and your water and your sleep, that's the foundation of where you should start. And then look at some of these other external factors. And again, I'm gonna invite you in and say, hey, if you don't know where to start and it is way too overwhelming, please look for someone to help you. It could be me or it could be someone else that you're like, I resonate with them better. That's fine, but you got to find the person that you work the best with and then make a plan and stick to it from there. All right, don't forget, we're gonna, I'm going to be on here with my friend next week, Melitza, and we're going to be talking about nutrition and libido. This is the end of the show today. We'll be back next week with more amazing content. Thank you for listening to the I'm Not Fine Show. 
Lizzie Ends returns Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, and 10 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, have the best week of your life by making choices that take you from feeling fine to feeling amazing.